Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today I have another special guest, this time a former Olympian, a former strongman competitor, the founder of Giants Live, and the space cowboy himself, the one and only Mr. Colin Bryce. Colin, hey. how are you doing? I'm good, sir. Yeah, very well, thank you. Very well. It's lovely uh, to be here. Thank you, It's Ross. really good of you to come on. I know um, we've been trying to arrange a chat online for a long time, so thank you for coming on. I do appreciate it. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously, it's it's Hawaii here where I am at the moment, living living the life of a strongman promoter, you know. You're living the best life at the moment. I, I'm, I'm kind of jealous of that shirt. It is, it is very impressive. Dude, I loved your beard. <laughs> I haven't watched the one with, with you and Rob, but I saw like a multicolored beard. Have you, that did was you actually a, do that? Was that real or was that, that from was, the show? That was real. If you watch the, 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 the interview with Rob, I did it. I just wanted to make him feel comfortable, you know. Um, yeah, right. it, was, it was good fun. He's a good guy, so it was enjoyable to chat to him. But yeah. you're an interesting man yourself. You've done a hell of a lot over the years. I think a lot of modern strongman fans don't realize that you're actually a former competitor and an athlete yourself. You know, a Not a very good one, Laws. Well, you're, 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 you're the first Olympian that I've had on here, so you can't be too bad. Okay, well, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll get started by going back back to your kind of introduction to sport, if you like, and um, where your fascination with, with Strongman kind of came about. Yeah, yeah, back, well, crikey. I mean, I, I was very lucky, um, you know, getting into Strongman in, in many ways. Um, I, I was... Douglas Edmonds, the great Dr. Douglas Edmonds was was the man. And Big Dougie used to run World's Strongest Man through the 90s uh, and through the late through the 80s. He very much looked after John Paul, used to go to World's Strongest Man. Uh, there was a fellow called Davy Webster, who is about 100 years old. And David is a, a very venerable character uh, and is very much the, the ultimate historian of Strongman. Uh, and he... He and Douglas invited me out to, and this was a tough gig, I have to say. I was a university student aged uh, 19 or 20, and it, it was to go to a, a, the rough island of Mauritius to a five-star resort to, <laughs> to go and work, <laughs> basically as a, a, as a, you know, I guess a slave, really. I mean, I was, we were paid, paid nothing for a yeah. month, and I just dragged equipment around the beach up and down, and, and, and it was 1996. Um, world's strongest man and my other option was either stay back and and I was working as a butter shoveler so it was butter shoveling or or Mauritius I was like butter shoveling Mauritius <laughs> I don't know I was just such a difficult thing I was earning like almost I think I was like almost 18 pound a day at the time like 25 dollars I was making money man I was <laughs> Mauritius and then yeah that was it and I but you know before then I was lucky I can't pretend I was a wee bit silver spooned when it came to strongman, you know, I've got, um, but behind here's a lot of mess, <laughs> but there's also, uh, there's John Paul's jacket on the wall. That's some, that, that's another, you know, when I was 13, 14, I hung out with him a few times. I hung out with him. Look at you pretending to be pals with Colin. <laughs> but he did, he took me to a wrestling match, Iceland versus Scotland. There could be another few of those coming, I tell you, <laughs> the way things have been recently. <laughs> but that's a little in-joke for you and I, Los. Um, but yeah, and he, yeah, bless him. What a good fella. Um, yeah. And he was, he was just, a, just a great character, just exactly as how he was on the telly. Uh, so my fascination was always there. So yeah, that, that was kind of how I got into it, really. No, that's, I mean, out of, out of all the, the legends of the sport, I wish I got the chance to meet John Paul. Because obviously, I mean, I've, I've been lucky to meet most of the, 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 the World's Strongest Man winners. Um, but he, he was a real character. He was, he was probably the first person that really took it to the masses because he wasn't just an athlete. He was a, a character. And he, he just, he made the sport popular back in the, the 80s, I guess, along with the likes of Kaz and, and Jeff Capes. But he just, he, he was the one that really seemed to have the, the personality and the drive to think beyond just competing. Big time. Unbelievable, actually. I mean, what a character. Yeah. You, you, I mean, you know, everyone can quote a few John Paul lines, you know, normally yeah. slightly messed up, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know I, 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 I'm sure in the comments below, you can do a plethora of great John Paul think, comments. Yeah. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to remember great um, Capes comments, you know. In many ways, <laughs> bless him, Capes, he was the, almost the, the anti-hero. Yeah. Maybe not to the UK fans, he was, he was the kind of staunch uh, hard-working policeman 
who took on this glamorous rock star from, from <laughs> Iceland. Uh, and then, of course, there was Kaz was definitely just the bad guy in the whole thing. Oh, you know? Kaz, was de- <laughs> Kaz was definitely the bad guy. He, and he didn't mind this playing that role. Yeah, no. he, he, he didn't mind playing that he's role. He's a natural. Right? He's a natural. Kaz. <laughs> yeah, he's a, bless him. Even now, if he's not getting booed, he's not happy. Uh, K- uh, oh, Kaz likes to be loved just like the rest of us, you know? Of course he does. Um, and if you're watching this, I send you my love, Kaz. <laughs> uh, I want to. I want to get Kaz on eventually. So that's um, that's for another day. But tell us about your competing, because I remember. I mean, I've I've been a fan of Strongman for many many years, and way before I was competing, I remember seeing a young Colin Bryce going head to head. I think with um, possibly Raymond Bergmanis on a medley at World Strongest Man. I believe I was leading him at one point. <laughs> I think you were. <laughs> well, it, it was it was really in the warm up before we were getting to the front, getting to the start line. No, I, 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 I nobody could duck. Well, like old Brycey, man. <laughs> and, and then and then we hit the tire, got a little slower, but I was tire flipping uphill. That was before people realised that was I think that was the second or first time it had been used in World Strongest Man tire flip. And, and and this is right. There's so many things that can go wrong in setting a competition up a strongman. Have you ever flipped a tire up a hill? Yes. As opposed to someone next to you flipping yeah. it down a hill? Yes. How much easier is it? <laughs> it's, off the scale. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's like 20% easier if, the, if it slopes enough. Anyway, so there we go. I won't bore you with it. I should, I should have beaten Brig Man. It's easy. But <laughs> I was a stand-in. I mean, I was, uh, I was the reserve. Uh, back then, they used to put stand-ins. So I can't claim I've competed in World's Strongest Man, really. I was reserved three times. Okay, but may- maybe a, not World's Strongest Man. I was a Man, guy but... six times. Uh, the Britain's Strongest Man final. Um, that, even that was a bit of a disgrace. I got I mean, rumbled, to be, to be fair to you. cheating in, in the Husafeld Stone. Yeah. So, you know, well, <laughs> you, you, you were a very smart athlete, and you, you kind of, you, you, you certainly weren't the strongest when you were competing, but you, you really, you, you thought about, how to get the best out of your body on, on these events. I mean, you, you know, most of the modern guys now do think more than, it's, it's not just about brute strength anymore, but the, the, the best guys, even from the past, like Yuko Ahala, you know, Magnus Ver, they really thought about how to be the most effective athletes, not just go in with brute strength. And, and you, you, you know, you used every trick in the book to, to be as effective as you can. And, it, you know, there's a famous quote, I think, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. By, um, I, don't, I think Devin Lorette, <laughs> the arm, arm wrestler, going to sit it. But. Uh, that one's been around a while, I think. Yeah, that, that, one's, that was probably a, probably a college... Uh, Probably a college football coach should probably coin that one first, I imagine. But to be uh, fair to you, you, you were a good athlete. I mean, you sort of play yourself down. Maybe in terms of, of static strength, you weren't as strong as, as, as the likes of, you know, the big power lifters and, and, and the, the really, I mean, you know, now we have a ridiculous plethora of athletes that are just all freaks of nature. But back then, you had a good mix of different types of athletes. You'd have a power lifter, you'd have, you know, uh, uh, American footballers would be involved, athletes from different sports. Do you want to know something, Lars? In a funny way, I don't think you and I were that dissimilar. When I first saw you coming into Strongman, you had massive arms. I mean, you had <laughs> arms like 22 inches. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Colin, this Colin's is the truth a... about Lars. This Lars is, I mean, Lars, you what an athlete you were. I remember, I, was, I remember filming. I remember filming. We were down. We were down at Minehead the first time you came, <laughs> and I, I'm not sure quite how we got you, but we got you anyway. There you are. You turned up, and you were so, I don't know, the words affable, but just such a genial, good guy. And and I, you know, but I remember thinking, filming, going, God, geez, how much time do I, how much time do I waste on this guy? You know, what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we went, we went to that kind of spooky church. Remember it? What the hell were you doing taking me there? <laughs> I don't know. It was weird. And then and then I remember you just sort of. I, you just came alive in competition. Just that you just you weren't bolting with muscles. You not were no at all. giant, <laughs> and you were just so athletic. And just not that I'm saying I'm super athletic, but you knew how to put your body out there. And when I always imagined you put, but I, I was not the greatest guy in training. I trained. I think I trained harder than any man alive. I, I'm 100 percent convinced of that. <laughs> Because, you know, there's, I mean, another great quote is, it, it, you know, it's, it's, genius is just really disguised as hard work. You know what I mean? <laughs> hard work can take you a long way. Oh, yeah. With, with, with you, know, a, you know, 1%, you know, uh, 
inspiration, 99% perspiration, if we're going to really start hitting all the quotes. You know? <laughs> and I'm big on perspiring, I tell you. <laughs> so, so I think both of us are. Yeah. My, 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 you know, my favourite quote when I was a bobsleigh was when Daley Thompson said, you know, when everyone else is sitting around enjoying Christmas dinner, you know, passing presents, getting things cosy, I would go and train twice. It's exactly what I did the, the year of the Olympics. Yeah. I went there, you know, I went out, first went out, shoveled the snow off the track, trained, and then went, rested, slept. There was no there was no Christmas for Brycey. Not when all the other wee softies were passing presents. I was just getting the training in. You know what I mean? And I love that. That was, and I always imagined, you know, you were, you always kind of had this exterior of niceness and, and, and decentness, but I always imagined you trained a hell of a hard loss. You must oh. have done. Yeah, one hundred percent. You know, I, I don't think I was blessed with the genetics of, say, uh, Brian Shaw or a half Thor, but I um I had a, a, a real desire to be the best that I could possibly be, and I think that's one of the reasons I sort of stepped back a bit now is because I don't like not being at my best. It's yeah. it, it, for for me, just taking part isn't enough. I can I I, I can deal with being beat by a better man. Mm. But I can't deal with not being the best version of me. And does, it ever, does it ever frustrate you that were Lawson is best? Let's say, let me not be insult you, but five years ago, yep. you're absolutely on fire. Yeah, yeah. Kind of coming into 2015 was you were good, and then you're you're you're, you're, you're any on any given day you could have pulled a world record from ten years ago, yeah. five years ago even. Yeah. Yeah, four years ago, 2011, actually, you had the world record. Share off. Yeah. To be honest, I think, I, I you know, think... You think I was... how many... Think, I remember you telling me once... I remember you phoning up and saying, oh, Brycey, I've done a 190 log. That's a British record. Can you believe it? And I was like, that's unbelievable, mate. I can't believe you've done a 190... <laughs> now you'd be slightly ashamed to turn yeah. up with a 190 log to a log, <laughs> you know, a big, a big dog contest. Yeah. Amazing. Oh, the standard is is ridiculous now. But, I mean, I mean, personally, I think I was at my best in 2012. I think that was when I was in my prime and I, I came third at Europe that year. And then I went to China, tore my labrum and Thor, not a Thor, um, Lalas and Zadrunas had beaten me at Europe's and they went on to podium and be one and two at Worlds. And I wasn't far behind them that year. I was competitive against Zadrunas in many international contests. And I really felt like I was just getting better and better. And unfortunately, it was the start of my injuries. I tore my labrum in a contest in China and that... Mm. The stupid, you know, you're young and naive. How did you do it? How I was doing do a do dumbbell it? event and they were, it started to rain. So they were trying to rush us through the event as quick as they could. And rather than warming up properly and setting the dumbbell right, you know, you know yourself with dumbbell, you've got to get it set right. And then you can actually make it look quite easy when you hit it right. Mm, but if mm, you mm. don't get it right and it comes away from you, you end up fighting it. And that's what happened. I slipped slightly. It went behind me, tore my labrum. Uh, I mean, the British. Was that was that when you were wearing that kind of silver outfit? Yeah. Which is Was that was that was that's that, the, that's was the makeup? Famous... The kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, um, yeah. No. From from my competing, I mean, I, I reckon I was good for a two hundred kilo log back then, which would have been world class at the time. Um, now, it's what, what still... was your PB in there? What did you do? I, I did one ninety three times in contest, and I was I was. I did 190 at the British, which was enough. It beat Eddie, it beat Hicksy, you know, I beat yeah. these kind of guys that have gone on to be monster pressers. And I, I was focused on winning the whole show. So I left it at 190, and I, my plan was to go to Europe that year and do 200. Um, but unfortunately, I picked up an injury and <laughs> never hit 200 since. And I, I honestly believed I would have hit 200 quite comfortably that day. But you can't worry too much about ifs and buts. These things happen. Here's a question for you. Someone asked me today. Wooden log or metal log, thin log or big log. <laughs> what's the oh, what's the best log you can give someone to give a? Do you want to, I said to him, "Geez, uh, it's obvious a, a metal log must be more perfect." I mean, it's but I know Sadrunas, for example, likes a wooden log. He particularly likes that wooden log we have. Yeah. Uh, and then you think about it. Too, well, it's a funny one, isn't it? Fat log or thin log. When I was looking back through the old 2012 footage, we used to have this sort of nasty little sort of 
chip a lot of sausage. <laughs> I mean, but actually, it's, they're horrible to kind of curl up, aren't they? That, that's the and, thing. There's pros and cons to, to all types of logs. The, the metal logs don't tend to be as easy to clean because they slip a little bit more, whereas the wooden logs will actually grip into the fabric of the tops mm. of the wear. The thicker logs are easier to clean. They're a bit easier to roll up your body, whereas the thin ones, like you say, you can't really roll them. There's not enough diameter to kind of just roll up, so you've yeah. almost got to power clean it. Yes. Um, but then I'd say the, the smaller logs are easier to get overhead because you can generate more leg power. Your arms are in a lower position, whereas the bigger logs tend to suit the stronger strict presses, if you like. Yes, I mean presumably your hands, are high, your hands are higher up. Yeah. It should in so theory you can, be... You can get more tricep into it. And of course, then the, the wide grip suits a, a snatcher or a, a Bergmanis or a, may I say a, a Rob Kenny. You know, yeah, not yeah. a snatch. You know, snatching literally, yeah, yeah, but yeah. you're you're yeah. jerking, aren't you? Yeah. But um, it's almost out in that position, isn't it? In fact, the Bergmanis's log that we had, and I put on um, Luzhniki Olympic Stadium in in, in the Russia 2000, um, 2004. 2004 yes. in Russia. Two thousand three or four. I can't remember now. Two thousand and four. That was that was a hell of a weekend, actually. <laughs> but, um, we, we, I, I, <laughs> I bought like a cheap, I remember I bought a cheap for nine quid on Oxford Street. I bought like an ice cream seller's suit to host it. <laughs> and, and the next day, I don't think I could wear the jacket because I think I got like, I don't know, a bit of some vomit or kebab or something on the jacket going out getting <laughs> drunk on the Saturday night, man, with Sven. Um, but I do remember that log. It was uh, it was ridiculous. No one could lift it. You, you ever watched the old footage of that? I have it. Like, yeah, man, just broke the world record. He just went. Because <laughs> it was like a two-inch movement. It must have been a meter wide, the handles. Anyway, yeah, you know, I mean, it, it moves on to, to one of the things I wanted to talk about. Because when I was first getting involved in Strongman, early 2000s, kind of watching... Mm. I mean, I'd watched World's Strongest Man for years since I was as a little boy. But when I was 21, I decided I, I like this sport. I want to watch it. And I was watching all of your... I think they were Super Series at the time. Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Me and me and Ulf Benson and uh, Odd right. Haugen were, yeah. were old, as they say in America. Yeah. And I, I, I used to love watching those shows. You did the one with um, Magnus Samuelsson in Sweden. Mm. You were going to Canada with Hugo Girard. Mm. And you, for a few years, you were all over the place. I think you, you did. You brought a DVD out. And did, I, used, yeah. I used to love watching that time and time again. I, it's really? funny because I train a lot of youngsters now and they always say they love watching strongman shows. And these days, I, you know, I'm laid back about it all. But I remember when I was young, I used, I used to have these shows on repeat, trying to just pick up little tips and, and get inspired by the athletes. I was talking to Magnus Samuelson about the DVD you guys did at his farm. I used to watch oh, that. Oh, World's over Strongest again. Arms. Yeah. That was, a, that was a classic. <laughs> they, they were great. I loved all of those. And, you know, that was, they were the real kind of things that got me involved heavily. Do you know, do you know the guy who came and did, worked as my cameraman? It was a guy called George M. Steele, who went on to get a BAFTA. Really? For director of photography. And last year, filmed Robin Hood, which was a bit of a turkey. He was the main director. Yeah, that's amazing. Photographer. <laughs> Talk about lucky. I mean, it, was a, it was just a pal of mine. And then yeah. he was like, you know, bumming around for some jobs. You know, 100 quid, you want to come to Sweden? Yeah, man, let's go meet Magnus Samuelson. <laughs> but he, came, he helped me cook up all these mad ideas. So how, how long, how, how did you get involved with the Super Series? Was it you that approached them? or, or? The Super Series was owned by U Ufa Benson, Ulf Benson, who was the most photographed uh, model in history for, he was a bodybuilder, came fifth in the, the World Open, I think they called it, or the, um, at the time, I'm not sure if he ever stepped on stage at the Olympia Soil. But by the time I met him, he was, well, I, anyway, let me tell the stories that happened. I'm watching on telly. Uh, well, I'm not watching. I'm commentating at Eurosport. You've been there. You've worked with me. You know what it's like. Yep. Uh, and it was 01, I think, they asked me if I'd come in and do the commentary on Strongman. Yeah. I said, yeah, sure. Great. Love to. You know, uh, it, was, it was being done by... I won't say anything in case he's watching, as if he's watching. It was done by this boxing guy. He was murdering it. You know, it'd be like, you know, here is um, Shillelagh, Shillelagh. You know, that kind of thing. Whenever, whenever I stood out at Eurosport, someone would always step in and murder your name. Yes, yes. Uh, there was that, It was one of those kind of ones. You'd be like, oh, God, this guy's driving me <laughs> mad. You know, uh, so I said, yeah, I'd love to give it a, you know, at least at least I'll pronounce the names correctly. Um, yeah, sure, I'll do. And then uh, I started in 01. And there was all series was on the super series, but there was this guy presenting. Camille looked a wee bit debauched. I look a little debauched now myself, and it's like <laughs> yeah, yeah, it happens to all of us, but, you know. Uh, uh, and he had a ponytail and whatnot. 
yeah, he was a bit on the heavy side, but you know, we're all a bit on the heavy side when we go there. Anyway, he must do a 50 yard, a bit silver head, ponytail. And he said, yeah, spoke a little, you know, hey, what's this? this is, welcome to Super Shoes. <laughs> anyway, I got the guy's number, the guy who owned it, Ulf, and I phoned him out and said, listen, Ulf, uh, hi, it's Colin Bryce here. I'm the commentator from Eurosport. You might uh, recognize my voice. <laughs> 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 and, he went, and I heard this voice, yeah, hello. I said, hey, um, that's my Swedish, by the way. I know it's Dutch, but <laughs> just roll with it, roll with it. We're, we're and then I, I went, uh, hey, uh, I, uh, I've been watching your shows. And uh, he went, hey, let me stop you there. I love your commentary. Went, wow, thanks, man. Thank you. Well, I just want to say this. I think I could do a lot better job than that guy's hosting your shows. <laughs> he's, he's terrible. And he's like, he's like, he looks debauched and old, man. You've got to ax him. You've got to get the rice in there. Oh, really? Is that bad, huh? That's me. <laughs> <laughs> I know what? Oh, like a, just hold foot, mouth. Uh, you know, and, uh, and he's like, okay, okay, you're, you're handsome, huh? You must be, a, yeah, you're cocky, that's for sure. You know, I'm Dutch, but really, I'm Swedish. And then, anyway, so we, um, yeah, I came out. He was, he was, what a brilliant bloke he was. But, um, like everything went to shit somehow. <laughs> These things do. And, and then, yeah, oh, oh, whatever, oh, nine, I started doing, um, Giant Slide full on, which had, it wasn't exactly the greatest star of the world. But anyway, yeah, Ulf Benson and that, and Odd kind of joined in at some point. Odd, do you know Odd Haugen? He, he yeah. played, he played, and it's a TV show I've got on a tape in the back there. No one's ever managed to um, to pirate and put on YouTube, so maybe I can put it out as a fresh one for once. And that could be many shows. And and uh, and he was competing in it. He he played for the Washington Redskins. Did you know yeah. that? Yes, you did know that. Did, yeah, you, maybe yeah. you watched the show. I, I did a whole piece, whole piece on him. Uh, uh, did you know did you, he won Mister Norway? Like, yeah, he's a, he's a really interesting character. He's, he's done so many things. He's he you know uh, he he got into strongman extremely late. He'd already late had three or four careers. Yeah. yeah, no, he's he's a really interesting guy actually. And he's a hell of a man. Yeah. Hell of a man, actually. Hell of a grip pretty, on him as well. These old guys. Hell of a good. grip. Yeah, <laughs> and a great <laughs> businessman. A great businessman, actually. He's you know, bought and sold and multiple companies, and uh, is a kind of um, uh, kind of guy you'd phone up if you ever needed some advice. He's very, I think he's he's smart. still in, he's still um, involved slightly now, as he he, uh, he helps Martins Martins Lisa does. Yes, so he's sort of come back into the fray. Just shoes, you know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whatever Martins means, you know. <laughs> He's a, Martins, I love Martins. He's a brilliant character. We've, we've got a few now in the sport. It's, it's really grown. But I mean, for a long time, other than World's Strongest Man, it was only your shows keeping this sport going. You know, the, the, the Super Series and the Giants live shows. Without them, the sport wouldn't have grown. And I know, I know, we, I mean, I've competed in a few of the, the early, you know, Giants live shows. I remember when we were in Turkey in front of mm. about 10 people and a dog. <laughs> Uh, there was a story that the marathon was on the same day and we were in the middle of the marathon. Do you remember that? Yeah. You, there was the Istanbul marathon. We were trapped in the middle. No one could come to it. That was, that a, was, one, of, that was one of my poorer efforts. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, it was a fun fun contest. I mean, the, the equipment was terrible and, and things were falling apart as we were doing it. I remember, do you remember the axle? I broke the axle world record. <laughs> and as yeah. I dropped it, it exploded everywhere. And I think for a very, you know, short, brief moment in time, I had the world record on the axle. So Zadrunas went and broke it about a minute Stinker. later. Stink. Yeah. Who else did, did anyone else do 05? 205. It was 205. No, just, you did, just, right? just me and um, Brian Shaw did 195. Um, I think a couple of other guys did 195. Scoo did 185, I think, maybe. maybe. Yeah. But, um, Stefan Solvi did 195. Stefan Solvi, I don't think. think. I don't know if he did 195. I think he was. Do you, do you remember Katona at the end? Urban Katona. Do you remember? I met, I, I, it cut me deep because I was the promoter. Yeah. Do, you me, do you remember? The, <laughs> do you remember? Do you remember the Hoosevelt Stones? The Hoosevelt Stones falling like, apart. Um, I, I mean, this is where I'm really bad. You know, I, I can't put a light bulb in. I'm just not really good at things like that. And, you know, obviously, I got the kit in. This is where Darren has been like a marriage made in heaven. Darren understands macho stuff like that. You know, what concrete should be made of and how you get these things done. And <laughs> anyway, this dude just made me these stones. It, it was Paul Prejol and Turned up and every time someone picked them up, like Katona, Katona was such a good sport. As he carried it, he just went, he was carrying on, he just went, Kunk, and I just fell off and it fell on the floor. And he just looked at him and went, hur, 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 hur. <laughs> I remember that laugh, man. It was like, you could hear Katona's it. Katona's laugh was brilliant. And, he, and it's this famous line at the end, and it, I just, I was like, oh, God, you know, I, I, we just done the, the, 
the whatever ceremony, and they were putting it all in the truck. And all I heard was Katona, ha, ha, well, why are you picking it into the truck? Why didn't you just sweep it all into the truck? <laughs> 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 yeah, I think oh, man, it was fun. just a pile of shit, wasn't it? It shows how lucky the younger guys are now. They don't know how lucky they are, these youngsters now, <laughs> with their laser cut kit and you know everything perfectly weighed. It was it was fun back then, though. It that was, was a good. hustle, man. It, I, you know, I had to pay. I had to <laughs> on, the, on the border to get it in from from uh, Romania. I mean, what a stress it was awful, man. Awful. So, wh- when did you start the Giants Live? Oh nine, did you say you started Giants Live? It was like oh seven. It sort of um, began. It didn't begin. As anything against the Super Series, but it was ticking along nicely. But it wasn't. There was problems happening, but it was. We were going for it. We were going for Madison Square Garden. Oh wait, this is going to be it. We're going to. You know, that was the, one of the great moments of my life. And we, you know, it was a year's work to earn almost five thousand dollars in the end. <laughs> two two hundred and fifty-five in, two hundred and fifty out. <laughs> we think we made it five thousand dollars three years work, but it was yeah, it was it was tough. But it was a hell of an experience. But I get I get I digress. Oh seven, I met this guy. I met a few people, but it was like it's a massive opportunity to do this Saturday night ITV like the show, and it was the Mac Daddy. It was going to be the Mac Daddy, and I was kind of half I sort of created this this whole tour. It was more like a circus show, but they kind of, once I got in there, they wanted to do it more of a TV thing. And I somehow managed to get in way above my, the guy had, do you remember a company called 19, Simon Fuller? Oh, yes, yes. Simon, yeah, well, it was his, his right-hand man, the kind of guy no one ever knows of, who he uh, sold it, he made about 29 million quid or something. So it was, he was Mac Daddy Rich. And there was Kylie Minogue coming in the office, and there, and there was Brycey. But this strong man, I did, and you never know who is a strong man fan. He was a mad man. He, he was oh seven. He, he wasn't probably wasn't a Lost Charlotte fan yet. No, I mean, no, but no, you never the, know. It was. Lost fans just, were coming. Lost fans were coming. You know, yeah. they were thick and fast. But I don't think probably by oh nine he would have been. But um, anyway, so he 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 loved it, and we cooked up this whole TV thing in the end. I, I came in with one thing and ended up as a partner with him on this, and then AEG's the biggest of live events company in the world because of his heavy weightness. You know, that's the truth in life. The more clout you have, the more stuff you can get done, even if it's crap. And in the end, I remember, I remember it was called Giants of Strength. In the end, the joke name for it, you know, with, um, with my wife and a few quiet friends was Turkeys of Strength. I just knew, you know, when somebody's not going to fly. Yeah. So we'd created this monster and it was so much money. It was good. I don't know, I want to bore you about it. But the one good thing was, and all of this was so much money being plowed in by these different people. None of it coming to me yet, you know, but it was, you know, and I kind of in there was like, oh, God, this is the greatest waste of money the world's ever seen. It's like building a Titan Games type thing. But you know when somebody's not quite going to work? Yeah. Um, well, have you seen the Titan Games? No. Have you not? No. You must watch it. You know, it's the one with The Rock. Is it? The Rock hosts it. Okay. Watch it. I'll, I'll watch it. Watch it and call me up because I've got a few okay. things to say to you. It doesn't quite work about it. But it's bluffed, and I've got a few. I've got a couple. You know when you, you know when you, when something is, you know, <laughs> doesn't quite quack like a duck. Anyway, we'll, we'll leave that one for another time. Call me up when you watch it. Look at the games. You know okay. what? Okay. I mean? uh, anyway, so giants of strength, turkeys of strength. It, it, was, it was just an awful one. It was like all these games, were like uh, five fishermen from Cornwall take on, uh, you know, I don't know, two strong men in a game of. Um, you know, it was like a terrible ripoff of Gladiators. Basically, yeah. it would be like I had like Mega Man did, 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 did this show actually... in this game. No, it never got no, no, no. I was no, no, say, no. I'd not heard of it. No, no, it got it got yellow light commissioned, which means they offer you money to not give it to anybody else because right. they don't really believe in it, but they're scared not to actually spend <laughs> millions on it. Yeah. So, yeah, and then it, it, it weirdly then got sold on to Psycho and Simon Fuller, so we did. Did like another six weeks on it for Simon Fuller, who was also a bit of a strong man. In fact, not Simon Fuller, Simon Cow Psycho. Yeah. That's his company. Yeah. Don't know why I'm whispering. Don't know why I'm whispering at all. 
I just feel slightly. I, think I signed that many. Do, I, 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 I signed. I'm, I'm involved. I signed that many. Do not talk about it. Papers with Cal's company. The year. <laughs> uh, uh, well, am I going to get in trouble for this? <laughs> uh, I think it was, he, it was however many ten, twelve years ago, man. Don't get me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a turkey. But thanks for the money. I enjoy being a creative on it. <laughs> yeah. And then you, you set up Giants Live from it. That was the offshoot. They were like, I was like, um, by the way, see what we're spending all this money. Can, I, can we do like a little um, some logos, put some, you know, help me some of those, some people there working who are really smart, help me sort some stuff out. And we have AG, who are like the world's biggest live events company. Yeah. Do, do you remember we get them working with us as well on this? Yeah, great idea. Basically, they it was like a pre-prepared. So if you're going to have a hit on telly, like um, Dancing with the Stars, you then have a tour afterwards. Yeah. That's where they yeah. they make the filthy lucre. You know what I mean? You you really coin it in. Yeah. Dancing on ice, and probably Radzi's doing that now. You know that's what. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, I'd be stunned if he wasn't in 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 somewhere. South of Hull in a, in a small arena, you know, skating for. I said, no, no one can do anything in the arenas at the moment, as you know, wow. fine, well, Colin. But there we are. So yeah, <laughs> so that that was um that was it. We kind of AEG got involved. You probably remember. I don't know if you were had yet um taken out a mortgage or anything in those days, laws or any of that kind of thing. Oh seven, oh eight was a bit of a rough time. Yeah. It was kind of a general world collapse and everything. It was a run on the banks, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And um. Which is, uh, yeah, it's just, you know, have you seen this Jeffrey Epstein stuff, by the way? No. Do you know who Jeffrey Epstein is? No. Fine, you have to look him up. Look him up. I'll, I'll ask you about it next time. We'll okay. do it in show two. Okay, you yeah, have we'll, to learn we'll get you your, back. Man, you've been lifting so many weights, you've got to look out. Open <laughs> your know. eyes, Lois. Watch yeah, yeah. Netflix, dude. You're not oh, watching Netflix, are you? I, I have been watching Netflix, yeah, since lockdown started. But Netflix has been getting everyone through, hasn't it? Uh, have you, have you, have you, did you watch the Michael Jordan series yet? Yeah, I thought that was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Us, yeah. Yeah. Really good, really yeah, good. Just, I get my he's he he kind of was the exec producer, so he got to he who holds the pen writes the rules or yeah. writes history. So, um, uh, but yeah. Anyway, so that was the Giants live was kind of uh, was going to happen, um, and then the Giants uh, Giants of Strength, sorry, the Giants live kind of did happen. I think oh nine we did one show together. It was Mohegan Sun again. Yeah, and, and I had to part ways from Wolf. And, and the guys, I won't go on about it. It's not fair because I'm very, very, very grateful for everything he gave me. A shot at the title. Yeah. And I just, typical me, piled in with unbelievable. You give me a, an inch, I will just keep on going. <laughs> you just give me half a chance. <laughs> you probably have a few mentors in life if you think about it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. You know, that, that were on, did so much for you and gave you that chance. It, you know, that it, it's, 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 he's one of them. For sure, Doug Edmonds is another one. Um, it's funny because I then ultimately took over from Doug Edmonds as the referee. All those years later, yeah. he was still refereeing in '04, which is amazing. But and I started WSM refereeing in '05, um, which was very odd to take over from Dougie. But um, was. Do you want to know the story about that? Well, you know, IFSA happened, right? I do. Yeah. Were you good enough to get an IFSA contract at that point? Were you, I wasn't were you just even competing then, mate? That was before I came around. Well, you I, still, I were you still table? Were you table tennis? <laughs> yeah, I was table tennis. <laughs> Laura, started... Lawrence, by the way, is a. You were a county level tennis player. Table tennis player. Yeah, county level table tennis player. National, England karate. Yeah, national champion at kung fu. Kung um, fu, sorry. Yeah, yeah. sorry. I've, I've done a few things, but no. Two thousand and five, I started strongman training. I hadn't even stepped in a gym until two thousand and five. Wow. I was always a strongman fan, so I, I know all about the the split after oh four. And, you know, I, actually watching the World's Strongest Man 2004 was probably the final straw that kind of got me into Strongman. That was watching that show. I was like, I'm starting. Did you understand it? Though? Did you understand it? They did this weird format to this day. I, 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 was, I, MC, I was MC on it. And yeah. I still don't understand it was how a very, it worked. It was a very strange. I mean, the final was great, but it was the heats that were a little bit odd with the, the way they did the points and yeah, <laughs> I mean, how did you get to the final? It was all you, you know as well as me. They do some weird stuff at World's Strongest Man, and you know we, we, we can talk about that. But that that was probably the strangest one. But saying that, I really enjoyed watching that year. I think it, 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 well, it had things like wrestling on the beach. I mean, who doesn't want to watch Pudzianowski uh, against Vasil Virischuk? 
remember very soon just this guttural growl coming out of it, man. I was I was there on MC. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, here we are. You know, it was my yeah. I was just absolutely loving it. And I remember Marius as they faced each other. Marius was covered in baby oil, and I remember Dougie going, "Hey, Marius, hey," with his Scottish accent. For those <laughs> Dougie was indeed Scottish. Hey, Marius, get, get, get towel him down. Get what? Get one of your ladies over to towel you down, Marius. So he had to towel down. He had too much baby oil on. But then he kind of turned up and he squared up to Verischuk. We weren't quite sure. So Verischuk was terrified. Verischuk has seven bullet wounds in his body. Yeah, he's a scary, intimidating man. He's got this huge scar where this, this machine gun came out the back. That's, you, the rest was a bit smaller, but he got sprayed in a... Supposedly, it was, you know, just by accident. I was in nightclub by mistake. I got seven bullets in me, man. <laughs> Sure, Basil, yeah, you just don't look at me with those shark eyes while you're murdering me at night in my bed. He think, was so scary, man. Him and, and probably Bill Kazma had the most intense stare down you could imagine. Like, if, you, if you're going to stare down against someone, those two men are not the two people you want to be doing it with. It's, it's, it's something that skull of his is, is, is unique, isn't it? Yeah. And what, they, they need to sort of, um, when he dies, he needs to donate it to science. It's just the, the Kaz kind of <laughs> deep set eyes, you know. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, anyway, I don't well, remember yeah. Marius turning around and going, me, and just yanking and pulling out a tuft of Verestruck's chest hair. Just a, just a, like a lump like that, and Verestruck just... <laughs> <laughs> you knew this was going to be great. Anyway, yeah. that's about all I can remember from that year. <laughs> Except, do you know how that happened? No. They were going, you're like this. You were like this. <laughs> they were going to do, they had this the world amateur sumo champion. Wasn't Ben Brunning? <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was this um this big dude from Hawaii. He was a good thirty five stone. He was big. Yeah, he was big, but he just was like a big baby. You know, he, he looked like that bastard basically. I remember walking <laughs> down to the beach, and I was one of the uh, oh four. I was, and I was past it, but I was sort of still in shape. I was kind of like a hundred and something kilo bobslayer. Yeah. But I wasn't a reserve there. I was the MC. Don't pretend, Colin. You weren't about to take him on. It was, uh, what was his name? Oh, oh let's just call him Big Tam. I can't, I'm so sorry I've forgotten your name and you're going to kill me. Glaswegian guy. And he was short, maybe 5'9", five, 5'10", five, but like a bull, a big bull neck. was our reserve tester. And, and Dougie went, hey, Tam, get in there. Get, get, get a go against the big man. And, it, and he went to the big man. Listen, big man, we know what you're world champion and all that. Take it easy on him. Take it easy on him. And, and this is <laughs> the glass easy guy said, and there's nothing into it. And, ah, the guy, the huge fat world champion just flew out the ring. Boom, like that. It was, it was, uh, it was a hell of a moment. And, and Dougie just went, uh, listen, big man, I don't think you're up to the job. Eh? <laughs> and that's when they, then everyone met head on. Uh, that was it. He, he was shit canned like that, that quickly. And, and yeah. that was, oh, it was, that was great. <laughs> <laughs> is this why you, you you've always loved the head to head kind of events, haven't you? The, the man against man events in strongman. Oh man, oh man! Oh, man <laughs> I do oh, love man. a bit of that. But, uh, <laughs> well, did you ever wrestle in any of my? Yeah, Britain's in strongest any my, man. Any of my, my Britain's strongest <laughs> man. Small. Was it two thousand and eight? You made us wrestle. Jimmy Marku bandaged with his his head bandaged. He, he was angry that day. You you kept making him get in that ring, and he was a, he was you know within points of becoming the British champion. And I think he was in a lot of pain. And he was bandaged knees, bandaged elbows, bandage on his head. You made unbelievable. Him... Remember, the, there's a couple of photos there, just unbelievable. They're great Blood photos. dripping out. And he's, he's, like, he's like proper gladiator stuff. Um, sadly, there was a couple of them. What was one or two hamstrings went that day? There was the sand few... was too soft. Sand was too yeah. soft. That was the problem. Yeah, yeah. I, I remember I, I went against Felix first. Felix and myself went head to head. Did he? Did he go? Did he get aggressive? Felix? No, Felix. Felix, bless him. He's you know he's such a gentleman and he's such a nice man. He really is just a genuinely nice guy. I don't think. I mean, I'm sure he can get aggressive, and you know we all can when we're pushed. But he just he he likes it when it's just the the, the you know events. He likes him against the the metal. But I could just see in his eyes that he wasn't going to win this. But then I went against um, T. 
Terry Hollands, who just squished oh. me. He just who, kind of who, has a, me. who has a nasty side to him. Well, he has a nasty Terry's side. Terry's got a nasty side for sure. He, he was he, also he, not. He's, he's a nice guy now. You know. <laughs> he's not. He, he wasn't the slim, attractive kind of godlike uh, man that he is now. He, he was, was a big close. boy. He was yeah. a big, big boy, and I just remember him kind of crushing down on my chest. I was like, <laughs> it was. It was best of three. It was. So it, 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 he would have done it because it would be in his interest. Was that the first toss out of interest? That would have been a, I'm going to finish you. When I you can't. stand up, you're going to be squealing for breath, boy. <laughs> and I'm going to be it. Yeah. He, was, he was third place in the English uh, under-19 judo championship. Yeah, he, he was a, a good judo player. Um, and another Daz, great Daz, athlete. Daz was like a pit bull. But I think oh, he, he had torn his hamstring doing that in the heat. That's right. Could he compete in the final? I don't know. I think he pulled out. I think he pulled out. Um, and I think Ollie Thompson was competing that year as well. So it was a pretty pretty good lineup, really. Yes, yeah, some... Ollie, Ollie Thompson didn't take part. For a guy who went to the UFC, do you remember what he did? No, I can't remember. I, I mean, I, I, I don't... I know he was there, but I don't even remember so watching it, him it wrestle. It got so brutal and it was so hard work. And I, I really... I really... My fantasy had ter- started to turn into a nightmare for everybody. <laughs> what if you kind of launched into an eight-man round-robin thing? It was, just too it, was, it was just too much. It was it was madness. And best of three, it was, it's not what I was thinking, but I, yeah. I, I I was convinced that you're going to be the hardest man in Britain if you're going to win this as well. You're going to be, <laughs> you're going to be tough. Yeah. And, and <laughs> Arnie Thompson went on to the UFC, man. He was tough. Yeah. But I remember he had like one fight left. It was against Jimmy or something. And he already hadn't quite, he was Britain's strongest man. Time, was he? I, was think, it, uh, I think I think two, I think, years, um, two, two years before he was Britain's Britain's champ. Uh, Terry, okay, but Terry won it in two thousand seven, but he wasn't going to make the podium anymore, and he knew it. And and I remember saying, "Right, last fight, uh, can we have uh, Jimmy Marku?" Jimmy's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> "Ollie Thompson, where's Ollie? Everybody, Dad, Dad shouts, he's in Pizza Hut." <laughs> <laughs> he says he just asked him yeah. I said you he went now nah, he's not interested anymore he's had enough of your nonsense Bryce <laughs> <laughs> I think we'd all had enough of your nonsense without every, every single competitor was in pain because you've got these huge men clashing we'd already done a lot of events and then you know if you've never wrestled before, you don't understand how much energy it takes out of you, particularly when you have no technique. Terrific, terrific. <laughs> you've got these 22 stone plus men going head to head like you know, two sumo wrestlers, but not having a clue what we were doing. I made the uh, ring too big as well. Yeah. It was hard to get someone out. It was. <laughs> it was like 10 meters or something. <laughs> oh, anyway. Anyway. Sorry, they, I apologize to you. I apologize were, to they were, they, were, they, they were fun shows, those comps at Butlins. They were always good. They were always a good warm up for the world's strongest man. How did you, you did your bicep on the fingers? Fingers, wasn't it? No, I did my bicep originally on the tire flip in 2007 at Britain's. Mm. I made the final, my first Britons, and um, ended up tearing my bicep, my non-existent bicep at the time. Yeah, that was the joke, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, Sven Carlson was like, how did you tear your bicep? You don't have any biceps. <laughs> and to be fair, he was right. I was all legs and grip. That's what I, I was, legs, yeah. back and grip. I had no upper body strength at the time. Um, and then hip, 2008. Hip, hip power. As, as hip as power, as, yeah. It's always going on about he's your always, hip power. I, I don't know how he knows so much about my hip know, power, know, but know. You know, <laughs> is, he's an old man. I've got to be gentle with him. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, God, there's a <laughs> 2005, you became the referee at World's Strongest Man. Um, and you had that job up until 2017. I did, yeah, 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 yeah. So, 12 years. I've got you on. I've got to ask you about 2017. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about it online, there's been documentaries that have, have gone up. Um, I've, I, I don't know if you've seen any of the kind of things I've put out about it. It was, it was, it was really a terrible year for the Labour Party. You're right. Anyway. <laughs> What's that, Mum? <laughs> so I've got to go. I know. <laughs> so I'm no, I mean, duck this. <laughs> yeah. no, you, you, you're not going to duck this one. But um, I mean, I, 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 I was competing, so I know exactly when, what went on. And there's been a lot of things said both sides that. I've caused a lot of issues, to be quite honest, within the sport. You know, this is a, a sport. We, we're working on the assumption everybody knows what we're talking about. Here. I'm pretty sure the people watching have a good idea. But if you don't, there was a recent documentary about the, the final from 2017. Uh, Thor Bjornsson was claiming that he should have... shouldn't. I mean, there was a big issue about the, the double dipping on the Viking press. And 
claims that Eddie shouldn't have won, all these kind of, you know, things that have been said. But, I mean, I thought this was all sorted at the time. So I, I said straight away, I mean, Thor's a good friend of mine, as you know. Um, and I get on with Eddie as well. Like, you know, there's no, I'm sort of like a middleman in this. At the time, I told Thor, Eddie won fair and square, which I still stand by. I still mm -hmm. believe the 2017 World's Strongest Man, Eddie was the best man on the day mm -hmm. with the set of events that we were given. And I will defend you in that you'd given Thor plenty of, you know, we, 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 at World's Strongest Man, we always go through familiarization beforehand. Mm -hmm. All the athletes are told what's expected of them. Um, and regardless of whether Thor double dipped or not, I, Eddie was to Eddie went after Thor, so I still believe if Eddie needed to get one extra rep, he could have got one extra rep. He, he didn't look like he was at the limit when he stopped on his his rep. So I don't see a big argument about that. We've all every single athlete has had calls that they don't believe went their way, and calls that have gone their way in, in competition. I know myself. I've had many calls where. I probably think I should have been given the rep and I've had, I've certainly had calls where I probably got the rep and in my head, I was like, well, I'm still pressing here or something like that. But, have I, have I, did I ever do any harsh calls on you? To be honest, the harshest one is probably Magnus. He's the, he's the, the <laughs> he's the one I can really remember disallowing reps for, for people. But I guess from, from, you know, for me, I've always, I think my, I, I, I'm so, I must have said it a million times. I always own the side of, the athlete, yeah. and I always, especially in rep events, and I was always quite, but you know, I, the stakes got higher every year. Every year, the stakes got higher. There was colossal egos, and 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 not even not egos, that's because that's sort of taken in out of context. That sense, it'll be wrong. This was the life passion of ten of the biggest alpha males on the planet who barely disguise themselves as nice guys through the week. But when it comes to World's Strongest Man, oh, they, the eyes would roll and shark eyes would come out. This is their one overriding impulse in life beyond all others to win this. And it gets to the point where they almost cannot help but impose their will on things. Oh, well, they just want to win. They just, just like, you know, you were, and I've felt it from you. Yeah. Because you helped me that day on a different issue. I don't know if you remember in, in the in the yard. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on about the tire, and and I'd kind of written the rules and called it, and then I was the pressure was from different angles. Do you remember? And then you right. could, then, then you gave me the you gave me the release valve, and I come so grateful because I knew you well. I knew I could get away with it. And I, That's it. It's six reps done. Do you remember? I absolutely went mad, and then and then I kind of, as we walked off the hill. Is lost. I'm losing the plot here, man. He's absolutely <laughs> lost it. And I walked over and I gave you a little wig, like, thanks, Lars, man. Thank you, man. Because <laughs> you come up there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of decision, pressure, man. and, and I, I could see that the, th the thing is, what people won't see. I mean, you're the head, you're the head referee at the time at World's Strongest Man. So uh, we've all been given the rules. And I, 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 I've certainly had things go against me at World's Strongest Man in terms of events changing. I remember 2014, there was supposed to be a framework and a yoke in the final. I was licking my lips. We got to World's Strongest Man. They took those two events out and put a keg toss in and a loading on sand. How, why but did that happen? Where, 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 I, where, where, it was due, the, the reason being was due, or the reason I was told by the producers was the location. Where, so was, we, where, what, what country were we in again? <laughs> in the States. So we were in the States. Could, in, we, um, uh, co um, commerce? Yes. Yeah. Casino? Yeah. But we were, we were competing on the beach. This was in um, Venice Beach. Venice Beach. 2014. Yep, 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 yep. And where, where, where did we, do, what event did we do in there? We did the keg toss. So we did keg toss and then loading on sand. You maybe remember Eddie did the, the, the tire. He stood in the middle and tried to, to run with it like a farmer's <laughs> walk. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. That was the final. That was the final. Oh, the, that was the, the first event of the final, we, yeah. Yeah, we were supposed yes. to have the yoke and the framework, which at the time I was the best in the world at. I, I, so we, I, could have, we could have done it on sand. Though, no, we? exactly. So, so you had to change the events. But the events got changed once I got to World's Strongest Man. But the, yeah. the, the, point, the point of the story is we are told yeah. that events may be changed. Yeah. So yeah. I'm trying to sort of play the middleman a little bit here because I, I, I do understand it. And I've, I've been in that situation before where calls don't go your way. So we were supposed to do a drag into the tire flip in 2017. 
the drag that was part they did it in the heats but yeah, yeah the surface was ridiculously hard mm. and i mean <laughs> people think you're, you're making excuses but like I, i'm not too bad at dragging stuff i couldn't budge this thing that i had it's literally the the, the pavement wasn't flat we had like these little st- like little blocks everywhere and Disaster. i swear i swear or, it just, or, or a brick it yeah, was impossible I, I just couldn't move it at all i just couldn't move it um the only person i think that could finish it was with a giants like um thor and, and brian supposedly um, the tester did it <laughs> and i wasn't there for the test. the test i got flew in late and i missed it yeah the tester did it i was up. Like, Where's the tester again, man? Why would, <laughs> why would a tester never test at this? Why so, so sure can't do it? be caught into like a, a stone or something and it wouldn't go. So you as the head referee, yeah. you decided to change it from a car- from a drag and tyre flip into just a tyre flip. No, incorrect. No? In- incorrect. No, no, no. Was, yes and no. It, it, yes, it, yes it, and it was, no. It definitely was. Well, 100% it was, it was meant to be a tyre flip and drag. But that, was, was, that was originally it was to, what it was supposed to be. It was meant to be chain and anchor. Okay. Funnily enough, I was watching all this blow up again recently, and I first time round I didn't watch it. But it was like snakes on planes and all kinds of stuff, and I was I just turned off to either wow. It's, but then I, I was watching one of these kind of conspiracy theory shows the other day, and uh, about two months ago or something, and I made me I thought, wow, that's that's the facts are wrong there. Yeah. Truth is, and I went back and checked my emails, and I remember messaging Gregor. Gregor, he was out there already in Africa. I said, Gregor, so tell me. Chain and Greg is in charge of equipment. Greg Redmond, yeah. and he's like, "Mate, I can't see the chain and anchors here." He's like, oh. "We've never seen them at Worlds again since." They were, they were no, they were. When it, I won't bore you with it, but they changed sites, they changed continents, right. and lots of stuff got dumped for the containers. They never, they were never existed anymore. So I had the only option I I had. Because these things all rest on me at the last minute as I fly into Botswana. I'm right with three days to go. Athletes are there the next day. We either go with that. So I said, yeah, let's go with that drag then. We'll go with that drag. Of course, we then, and you were right. We then saw the drag happen and unfold. It was just a total mess. mess. And even if you put it incredibly lightly or light, the weight was now light, it wouldn't have pulled the same for everybody. No. The surface was incorrect. Yeah. And that this is one of the, there is no rule book. It's not like turning up to the Olympics where, well, is it Mondo track at six mil or is it seven mil thingy track? Oh, I don't know. No, the <laughs> conditions, you know, what? The wind changes. The wind change. That's the only thing you got to worry about in strongman. That would be nice. Yeah. But, I, mean, we, I mean, coefficient of friction doesn't even come into it because there was big slab changes. It was a disaster. Yeah. So we had to. But luckily, the tire turned up. Do you remember how big the tire was yeah, in the it was, final? It was, a, it was a beast. 540 kilos or something. We called it 500, but it was, it, was a, it was a big old tire. Yeah. And then there became a discussion about how many flips we had to do, wasn't it? Exactly. So, then, so, so, my, so my goal was, I spoke to the producers, and I said, what do you guys want? We've got 10 guys, two heats. If we have everybody failing, like we had at the beginning, so, so the now suddenly things are getting influenced. And the producers, hey, they put all the money up. Ultimately, this is they got they and they these guys are good. They're good at what they do. It's lasted forty five years of telly. I, I, as the guy who's running the sport, uh, sport there, I've got to listen to them. Yes, listen, fellas. What what do you want? What don't you want? And, you know, let me let me put uh, on uh, big, big think, cheese American a... producer uh, accent. Don't give us that shit from the heats. You know? <laughs> don't, no one finishes. It's terrible. You know, and they were right. Everyone thought it sucked. Brian thought everyone. So I went right. Okay. The only way we can do this is we've got the tires are also unbelievably big. We're going to have to just do tire flip. Yeah. And they were just like, great. Just don't give us that pile of crap again kind of thing. I was like, it wasn't really my fault, but okay, I'll do my best. Let's see what we can do. And I said, what, what would be the best time for a winner and the best time to lose a winner? Obviously, we don't want men finishing it. But it's, it's really nice if someone can win it in around 30 seconds. That would be great. Then you've got enough time to see everyone. This is yeah. how it works. Lane one, lane two, lane three. And there we go off in lane one. We've got time to talk about you and in lane two. Hey, I'm, on, I'm just my commentator microphone. <laughs> you know how it works. So maybe modern day, we're more like this. Yeah. And, and oh, Brian Shaw, 27.9. Yeah. yeah. Top two, top three men were under 30 seconds. I think three men failed all three men. Did you, did you do all 10 or six I, flips? I, I finished all of it, yeah. Of course you did. What was your time? 
Honestly, I can't remember. I was I was mid table somewhere. I was I think I was forty eight seconds, fifty something, something seconds, around that. Around that. Sixty seconds was the time, and you ran yeah. out. But no one's you, no one's flipping at sixty seconds. Let's be honest, you're dead. Two minutes of television, some interviews before, some interviews after. Bingo! Hour of TV at Christmas that works nicely in the slot. It worked very well. I believe the best man won. Did the best man win? Brian Shaw that event. I can't remember who won it. Brian was Shaw it Brian? was it Brian? Yeah, I mean Brian's Absolutely. a great. Yeah, yeah, Brian's a great. A great tire flipper. I believe it was Brian. It was either Carroll, then Hapthor. I think it was Hapthor. Brian, Hapthor, Carroll, Eddie Ford. Yeah. And they, they, they were pretty much the four best guys. Right? All yeah. within two seconds of each other, yeah. And I mean, my, my issue with Worlds, more so than, than the. I mean, as an athlete, I'm always, once I'm, once I'm told the events, that's the events. You know, yeah. you just got to train with it and you deal with, with events being changed. But my, my issue with World's Strongest Man to decide, because to, Worlds should be, it should be the biggest contest. It should be about the absolute best. And this, this year's World, for instance, the final was five events. I don't believe you can class the best in the world from five events. I can think I ask you, you something? Can I ask you something? Yeah. And this, and this is, this is, this is I, I know what you're saying. And I don't disagree. But it, sadly, a lot of things... I, I, so it's a lot of things you just have to implement. So you're kind of like you're kind of like the bad guy. I'm the guy who, who who's always going to be the lose lose situation. Well, if, you're I'm, in I'm, all, if you if you want to make TV and you want to get it done and we want to do this and the budgets are that and we haven't got all the time anymore, things are just getting harder to make. It's just the way of course. It's just the way life is, you know. And, and the thing is, you you have to kind of go by what the producers want. And that's, that's they important. ask me. They say, Colin, can we? Can we make a show with five events? I say, and I think to myself, I speak to Kaz, I speak to Magnus, I speak to Gregor, I speak to Darren. Never, ever make such major decisions. And, and, and the thought is, and all of those guys can, can now point the finger at me and say, well, I never really have anything to do with that. <laughs> and they will do, of course. And that's fine. Powerlifting, how many events? Three events. How many in weightlifting? Two. Can you find the greatest weightlifter on earth in two events? I, I, I can think you get different... the greatest powerlifter in three events? Uh, yes, therefore, therefore, okay. So I'm going to ask, I'm gonna ask you, you this. You Most, can. Also, uh, well, yes and no, sir. So you take the fifth if you want. Yep. But I want you to answer, right? Yep. Oh, I, I want you to tell me, I see if you know, I have a secret categories, right? So I'll give you one of them. Yep. What, as you probably noticed, Squat and deadlift. Yeah, that's your static. Yeah, of course. Leg and back. We're talking. Everyone has to do that in the heats. Yeah, every event. One of those normally, maybe two in final. We we normally often do six. Right. You then have. Well, what do you then need? You tell me. What do you? What do you need to? What are the, what's the recipe? What's the? What's the what, well, I, 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 I know. Even if I don't know the events at Worlds, you're going to do a squat or a deadlift. You're going to do an Atlas Stones. You're going to do some kind of loading. You're going to do some kind of vehicle pull, perhaps maybe a throw. You know, you, you you've got a good idea of what the events are going to be. But but, but, but my, the, the, the one you missed out was always overhead, an overhead overhead press. overhead power yeah. is always yeah. tested. Is. Back and leg power is always tested. Uh, strength endurance. I like to call it, it is your is your is your your normally your opener, yeah. yeah. Constant explosive power being attacked and things, you know, yeah. spinning with kegs, spinning. Yeah, you, you you then have, you know, you basically have then have your smorgasbord of of wacky stuff from fingers fingers to keg tossing, you know, and that, that kind of comes somewhere in the middle. And to right? be quite to be fair, some of the events they did years ago were a lot weirder than we have now. I've, I've... <laughs> but strongman's path for strongman's beauty is that. Yeah. You know, and, and sometimes it can, that can be no, subbed I, in as a Hercules hold. Yeah, and, and I you agree know? with you. But the, the, the point I'm, I was, I mean, you, you use like weightlifting and powerlifting as an example. Weightlifting is one, is two disciplines. Powerlifting is three disciplines. I'm, I'm every my best. every, every, every yeah. single contest is, is the same. In a powerlifting, you will always bench, squat, and deadlift. In a weightlifting contest, you will always, in every contest you go to, it's a clean and jerk. We know that. It's like being a sprinter, a 100 meter sprinter. You're always going to do the 100 meter sprint. But strongman, every contest is different. Every single contest you do is a different event. And I, this is just this this is just my personal view. And I'd like to get kind of your view as well. Uh, if you look at say a, te a tennis match, for instance, mm. the big contest they play best of five rather than mm. best of three. 
in darts and snooker, they play multiple sets of legs to find the, the greatest. A boxing match, you know, a championship match is 12 rounds. Um, you know, UFC championship match is five rounds as opposed to three rounds. You, you kind of, you're trying to see who is the absolute best in every single era. So just as a fan's point of view and from a competitor's point of view, the best guy is still going to win. The best guy is always going to come out on top. But you have nowhere to hide when you've got, say, eight to ten events. Whereas with five events, I'm, you know, let's say take myself at my prime. I was a top ten guy, you know, a top ten strong man in the world. In my prime, though, I could pick five events and beat anyone in the world on my day. If I, if, I, if, if I wanted to, I could, you know, whereas you could pick five different events and I wouldn't get anywhere near it. Mm. Whereas the likes of the Brian Shaws, the Half Thors, the Zadrunas, sure. you can put any event for them and they will keep coming up near the top. And then if you go 10 events or eight events as opposed to five, the, the most deserving man wins. There is no room for mistake or, or to, to hide or, or yeah. to have a weakness. And that's, I would love to, I mean, I, and I, I do appreciate mm. your side of it where you've got like, you know, budgets to follow. There's, there's, there's so many other factors that it, fans you know, don't understand. Yeah, a, a lot of it, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, everything in life comes down to money, really. Of when it, when it, this is, it, we're all professionals in this, you know, um, and, you know, even if no matter what anybody says about the money involved in prize money and stuff in Strongman, Unless you're a complete goon, the title is what really gives it. Now, that's not to say prize money isn't insignificant. It's best part of a couple hundred thousand dollars, I think, they give at Worlds now. I'm not, I'm not, I can't remember exactly, but, you know, and, and um, certainly we dish out enough at each and every show we do. It's, it's a lot. It's very significant. I mean, it's so significant compared to what it was 10 years ago. Oh, it's off the scale. The, the, the money is improving slowly. And, the, less, uh, and the less charismatic guys can live on it. Yeah, but the and, charismatic guys can take it and go like a ten times more in a year easily. You can't live off prize money, not in strongman yet. But the, the the top guys can now make a living from strongman by doing other other. You're going to go into he probably does. He he lives on prize money. He's, I mean, he's he Polish. gets a few sponsors. Yeah, I didn't say that. He, he said that. <laughs> but, I mean, no, but he, 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 he earns a lot. I, I, he's doing well. as, as an athlete, I never started to earn prize money. You, when, when you're a little little kid, for instance, and you're you know fascinated with these big strong guys, the goal is always I want to be world's strongest man. That's that's the goal, you know. As as a kid, as I said this in another, you know, if you're if you like Olympic sports, the goal is always I want to win Olympic gold. It's never. I want to win money. Do you know how much I've you know got? For four, five years of dedicating my life to make the British Olympic team, Salt Lake City, there we are. One more. I got, I got 500 US dollars yeah, for the I, entire I period. For the entire period. Yeah. They paid my food and board, and that was it. But did you I, enjoy I, I, the experience? You know, there's, there's not many, there's lots of people, there's lots of ways you can make money. I mean, I focus now, my focus is more providing for my family and making money. But winning title, I mean, when I won Europe's, the prize money was just a bonus. Winning that title was more to me than the prize money. Bless you. Do you know what you said? Do you remember you came to America and you won, I was just, it wasn't that long ago, two years ago? Oh, the Giants Live, yeah. So I saw an American, you didn't even know the prize money wasn't, no. let's, let's be honest, it wasn't an arena show, so it wasn't exactly... Um, <laughs> Hughes Richards, but I remember saying, "Hey, Lars, I'm going to put some money." Went, oh, uh, and you hadn't asked me the money, which I thought was quite sweet of you. <laughs> and you were, I think you were a bit like, "Oh, really? I didn't, I didn't think there was going to be any money here at all." <laughs> Jesus Christ, you're spoiling me. <laughs> <laughs> you are spoiling us, no? I mean, yeah, but hey, suddenly you can't just pluck out your bottom when there's no crowd yeah. to sell tickets to. That's how we make our money. And thank I'm... you, anyone who's ever bought a ticket to our show. Thank you from from the bottom of my heart, to, and I, and we get to spread it amongst the athletes. It's wonderful. I mean, I hope, hopefully, I mean, my, my kind of, you know, I mean, I want to talk about your vision for Giants Live in a minute. And, you know, hopefully, I mean, obviously, you've had a devastating time with the, the, the way the world is right now. But before I move on to that, just before, mm. like, I've got to ask, 2017 was was great. You know, Eddie became the world's strongest man. It was amazing for British oh, strongman. <laughs> no, I, I, I no, 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 no. It was amazing for British strongman. <laughs> Absolutely amazing. Um, Thor wasn't happy. They, they, they fell out with each other. We moved on. Thor became the world's strongest man in 2018. I actually think him losing in 2017 was a great thing for him as an athlete because he came back a freak of nature. Terrifying. The next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my question, and I, I, you know, I want to move away from it because there's been so much spoken about it. 
Why did this documentary come out now, three years later? So I, I could say I had nothing to do with it. And I didn't make the documentary. Yeah. But clearly, clearly I had my okay. And the reason I had my okay is that I believe there's a situation in life when you're the referee, you, you must take things on the chin. Yeah. I mean, I remember Phil Fister nearly murdering me one time when I gave him a, a decision. Um, but, you know, as every, he, he was about there in a the lockout. And then about 10 minutes later, he came and cuddled me and apologized to me. Hap thought the following year, let's face it, he didn't exactly, um, you were there? You were there in 20, there. were you in the tent in 2018? Yeah. <laughs> tent game, man, that was, whew, that, that, that was the world record for the amount of F words being said to, to me anyway in my life. <laughs> but you know what? He came up to me afterwards and he kind of went, Colin, I want to say sorry for that. Yeah. I, I, I had to do a tough call against him and Brian. Mm -hmm. And I gave them, I said, I, 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 the rep was fine. And I was now in the tournament director. I had to oversee um, and make sure what was going on was right. And I thought Magnus called it right. I told him that. I got told to fuck off 500 times. But you have to take it. If you have thin skin, don't bloody referee and promote, you wee sap. Go away especially and do something else. You got it. Sport. And, and guess what? Especially as the referee, I didn't. I, I sat quiet and didn't let anyone in my team say anything about anything for three years. You want to know the truth? I felt hurt. Okay. For the first time ever, when I believed and realized this is, I don't really want to go into this loss, to be honest, because I, I actually want this water to go under the bridge now. Yeah. I, 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 I just thought, right. I'll now okay this because uh, I saw something coming out on Instagram that basically uh, I felt was, um, I soon realized it, that these two boys, obviously they bloody hate each other. I think it's a shame. But, but, but well. they were willing to drag me into it again. I said, I'm the referee. Yeah. It was a tough call. It was a tough call. Hapthus has got every right to be pissed off at me. I swear, yeah, I swear, but, I swear, but, I'm the referee. But, but I would have, just like he did in 2018, he came back out the tent. He went, "Hey man, I was out of order there." I Which him, most I, of us do. I, I looked think... at him. I, I, you've done it before. Everyone's done it with me loads of times. I don't mind. I'm like, give me a cock. It's hey, cool. I... It's cool. But I, and you know, we, we actually shook hands. And I actually said, "Hat for thank you, man. I know you're going to win World's Strongest Man now." And he looked at me and went, "Thank you, thank you," because he, he internalized his any anger he had, yeah. and he took it to the next event. He, Boom, like a raging bull. Yeah, yeah. He was unstoppable in 2018. It was just too much energy lost and all that. It was, um, you know, I know Seb was on here. And, I, and listen, I, I, the way that video turned out, I thought was, it was, it felt harsh. And I'm not one who wants to court controversy with the athletes. I, I need guys on my side. Yeah. But I thought it was also very fair. So I, I, it was how it happened. That, that is for sure. Uh, so I opened up my archive. I, you were not asked whether you wanted to be a part of that. You had mm -hmm. recorded something a couple of years later. I allowed them into the entire thing. But quite frankly, but at honest, some I mean, point, at some point, and I have to say this really, at some point, people have to have respect for the contest and the referees and the promoters. Who don't come now. I I understand. He said, I'm never coming again anyway. But, and I'd like to put it out there. I think Hapthor is a wonderful entertainer. He's probably the strongest man ever. And I, for one, would be, love to see him again. Am I going to phone him up? Are uh, we ever going to be, you know, kissing, kissing with tongues anytime soon? <laughs> probably not. I doubt we ever will be again. I sincerely hope life is long, and I sincerely hope we can chat about this in the future one day. Yeah. But just please don't don't don't, I, piss, I, I, off. don't I, piss on I, me for hyping a boxing match. For God's sake, Hapthor, I don't like it. Yeah, I I I, I feel I feel, I do feel for you as the, the you know uh, you, you you like you say you can't win as a referee. You can't it's, win. It's very hard. You're 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 in a, a an awkward position because 
<laughs> you're almost not allowed to have relationships with people. You know, you're, oh. you're, you're criticized for, for being friends with, with, with Eddie, which I think is wrong. You, you can be friends with anyone you like, you know, and I've, I've competed in this sport for many, many years now. I, I know what goes on in the backstage. And I, I will defend you and say, I think without you in the sport, Strongman would have died. And I don't a think a lot of the, uh, the youngsters do appreciate that. Now, could we do things differently? Yes, we can all do things differently. We all, I've, I've made plenty of mistakes in the past. You've made mistakes. The promoters Lots. make mistakes. Lots. And we try, and we try and come back and we learn. And we, we, we do it better next time. And, I mean, one thing, you, you guys with Giants Alive, I think, have done a fantastic job promoting the sport. And, and Thor and, and ourselves and yourself, in 2016, it was, what a story. Amazing story. Swindon, even Mike Tyson was tweeting about yeah. it. And, 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 and Thor, boy, he took that one on the chin well and came back like this, a champion roaring the next year. I don't, I don't know how this happened, how this blew out of proportion, but I, I just had to eventually say my piece. And, and I, therefore, I didn't, I could have got involved in the video. I didn't want to. I had, everything was true. I, all those videos were made. And I always carry, have cameras watching things because. For this very reason, I, I'm not some sort of uh, insane control freak who, who's now going to. It is something that worries me that athletes might somehow feel a little bit of trust could go out there. Is Bryce going to start making videos on all of us now? No, no, absolutely not. No, no, no. Just don't push me to the brink and call me a, well, a let, lying, let, cheating let, bastard. Let, let me, let me I, and then you, I'm okay about it. Let me I ask you one that, more question please. because. Yes, I, yes, yes. I, one more question on it, then we'll move on. How did it like? Obviously, you had all the memes back in 2017 that some of the strongman meme pages were making and stuff like that. It can't have been nice, you know. I, I, as an athlete, we all have nasty comments from people from time to time, but you you got it quite badly back then. And it, I, I thought I thought Jim will fix it. Um, and for those who are watching in America, maybe you can explain who he was. I mean, you, 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 he was probably Britain's most horrendous pedophile and 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 most hated man. But he did a TV show called Jim Will Fix It. And that was, I, remember, <laughs> I can yeah. laugh now. I actually can laugh now. But I think it was quite cathartic, all that. Uh, Bryce, he'll fix it. Or Colin will fix it. And I was there in, like, gold chains like that. I, I remember at the time just having a total sense of humor failure over it all, which is not like me, because life's... We have but a good, I, life. I, I, we I have a good life. This is all great stuff. We, we're blessed. You know, I still have two arms, two legs. But, but, but Thor's got the biggest arms and legs on the planet. And, and he went on and won the next year. I must admit, I thought it was all gone and buried. We shook hands, we chatted, we'd, we'd broken bread together. And... Well, he's come back. He competed at Giants Live a number of times. You know, that was... That was the, I, I genuinely thought it was all done. And then, obviously, there's the issue between Eddie and Thor and the, the deadlift yeah. and the boxing. And I, I don't want to go into that today because that's a, an, no. another story. But I just wanted... I wanted a, hell to, of a hell of a fight, though. I can't gonna, wait to see that gonna fight. It's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. <laughs> But um, we'll, we'll we'll go out and we'll watch it. But, Damn right, I will. Yeah, you know, I just yeah, wanted yeah. you to give get a chance to sort of get your side of it across as well. Because Listen, uh, Hap Thor, I think Hap Thor came. I think he was done done the, an amateur Arnold's, and he he came to the first professional contest. I think was some. I think. You know, I'm not trying to claim he, Hap Thor was mine or something. He came to Poland. You know, I remember this. Oh, look at this guy. You know, just you are stupid sent from heaven. Yeah. Thank you, Thor. <laughs> Your name's Thor. I love you. This is it. Yes. Yeah. And then, well, then, then, then the beast hit. turned up as well, you know. And you know, even with everybody just up their game. You up your game. Terry up yeah, their game. You have to. It's been a, it's been a golden. This will be remembered as an the I believe since the 1890s. This is the greatest period in strongman, and I just hope we don't go down. Like it did in well, it ended up in the First World War. But I mean, you go look, go look back. Open up the British Library, the British Museum archive, and look at the front pages. Yeah. You will see, you'll see Charles Sandow, or was it not Eugene Sandow? Eugene. Charles was his dad. Eh? Anyway, he says bluffing. He's a Prussian, but there we go. <laughs> anyway, uh, Charles, as he was known, El Eugene up there. Yeah, th that's some. Um, he was, he was front and centre. He, he had chains of gyms before anybody. He had his own hot chocolate, man. He was the... Anyway, so there you go. And things are back to that. Getting, we're not there yet. We're not... 
had we done the Royal Albert Hall in London, that would have been amazing. Wouldn't that just have been? Let's move on. Let's move on to that. Now. I don't want to keep. No, hey, listen, I want to say this to Hapthor. Hapthor, uh, you know, I love you, big guy, and, and uh, you know, and I say for this in the bottom of my heart. One day we'll be friends again. One day we'll have a hug. I, I now you're thinking you're hope, cursing it, but anyway, I hope so. I, I do genuinely hope that you guys can sort of sort things out because, from a fan's point of view, you know, forget being a competitor. From a fan's point of view, not having someone like him in a contest will be very. It'll, it'll be a sad day. If, if hey, he, listen, it's sad. Said that it was a bit harsh. I think your words were even timed to it. Sorry about that. When I was watching the video, like looking back and then seeing you with Seb. Seb, listen, mate, Seb's a dude, man. I like Seb. Everybody, Seb, how can you not like Seb? He's a nice, he's a good, a nice, he's a nice man. He's a nice man, you know. But um, you know, but uh, we we all get behind so, our men. We all get behind our thing. Everyone's got a persona. Listen, Seb, someone had to be the bad guy in the video. I see Seb. <laughs> Seb listen, I genuinely because crikey, my my daughter played with Seb's daughter. I mean, this this is just for, we are a family. We it's, have it's always a, it's, it's a small it's community, a very small a family. family. You know, we all know each other and. Hopefully we can. I mean, let's let's hope soon. I mean, I want to ask you while I've got you, what's happening with the Giants Live? Because obviously you guys built it up into such a a, a big event. I mean, strongman wise, it's been huge. Because like I've said many times, I remember competing in front of maybe three people and, and my mum watching or something like that. You know, now I mean, wait, 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 when I had the opportunity to compete at Europe's in front of ten, twelve thousand people, Eddie smashing the five hundred that day, I went and won Europe's. That was an incredible experience, absolutely incredible. And then you've had other shows. You know, we did the Wembley show. The the, the British Championships has always been mm. that's just grown and grown every year. Um, many others, the, the the comps in Manchester. Obviously, this year you had the Royal Albert Hall. We were all looking forward to that. And then COVID happens. How's it affected you guys? And what's the plans going forward? Well, uh, well, I'm just going to dramatically take two pencils off my nose. <laughs> no, I don't know, man. It's uh, it's all it's you know what? It's so rapidly changing, and I think I'm part partially in a jovial mood because actually we've got a bit of a lifeline via, you know, it's not like I'm, I'm you know, Boris. You know, hey, what's going on, mate? But um, we did get some news from one of the major corporations that things could be looking. Quite good. Soon. Good. For, thing is, our, our mod. What are we? We're indoor-based mass. Um, you know, mass audience. <laughs> Couldn't be any worse. And it's not as if, as if you don't just come into an arena. You know, you have to go beer. You go for a dump. You know, it's a four-hour show. You got a pizzas. You got to have it. You know, there's there's queues and bars, and so they they're looking at everything now. And I think there's a genuine chance. August eighth. Europe's strongest man could happen. That's good. I think it's a very good chance, Stephen. Very good chance, but it's going to take a, a lot of strange. I don't know. Maybe everyone's going to have to be in like a full body suit of rubber or something. I don't know what quite what is happened, but they're talking about it. But yeah, anyway, you, hopefully you'll be there. Um, you know, guest of honouring unless you unless you're feeling strong enough to compete. Also, you. How are you doing? Are you strong? Uh, to be honest, I'm pretty much right right now. My my focus is elsewhere. I, I my my Achilles is holding me back massively. And as much as I, I after after Worlds, I really thought I want to do one of the one day shows. I want to do one of the Giants live shows, particularly on on the home you know home country. But right now, I, I guess with with this kind of lockdown happening, it's, it made me re reevaluate things. And unless I can be competitive. I think I'm I'm done with competing. So um, one of my one of my ideas about Royal Albert Hall, and we still haven't got the exact format. And we now are not June sixth. <laughs> that was like a couple of weeks ago. We are going. To, you're looking off camera. Have we run out of time here? <laughs> no, no, no. My, 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 my email. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Um, uh, yeah. It's, it's a unique event, and one of the thoughts I'm still haggling with Daz. You know, Daz, we're like so yin and yang. One of the things I want to do is is have a sort of rock star guest or two in, in every athlete in in every event so what basically what, what we need to do loss is make sure there's one event for one day one night only <laughs> ladies and gentlemen he's back out of retirement Lawrence, <laughs> what is he gonna those fast tips Lars? what are you gonna do man what can you what can you do world class again there's got to be something or, uh, or is that achilles buggered yet even is the old it, fast tips? it's holding me back i mean I'm not. I'm not going to sit here and say never again, because 
I'm sure a year down the line, the, you know, that, that bug will kind of hit and I want to be competitive again. I've just, I found peace at the moment with, with doing other things. I'm training a lot of other people. I'm enjoying kind of the commentary side of things that, you know, I, I certainly want to stay involved. I, I love Strongman and, you know, you gave me my you're first... You're very comment. good, but you're very good at... Co- you, you weren't so good on the first one, remember it? I remember, remember the first back one at me. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> so quiet. A, I was a, as a little shy boy back then, but I've sort of grown, grown a bit more. And um, I, I, really, I really do enjoy. Uh, I guess the one thing we, I've, I've had a great career, and I've, I've sort of. It was really hard because you're, as, when you're in competitive mode and you're athlete mode, you're always looking to the future. You're always like you're never satisfied with what you've achieved. And I had to sit down and kind of look at what I've done. I've won British titles. I've won European titles. We'll keep quiet about this one, but I've won a world title as well um, for a for a different federation. <laughs> but we'll, we'll keep. Up. I've I've beaten every single top athlete there is to beat. Take, take on him my day. There. Take him. I've I've, I've <laughs> yeah. broken countless world records. I've, You've like, had the world record and the axle at one point overhead. Yeah, I've, I've, axle I've had deadlift and, and, and a deadlift as well. Two had, of the biggest. You know, I, I was arguably the absolute best in the world when it came to farmers and yokes in my prime, and. Unfortunately, I've been plagued with a lot of injuries as well. Oh, well. And, you know, I've got to the point now where I've got to kind of balance things out. I've got a young family to provide for and look after. I've got, you know, businesses to run now. I'm focusing a lot more on those than I am competing. And, and you know yourself as an athlete, when you're, when you're focused on a contest, it can consume you. It's, it becomes everything. Really? And, and, yeah. and now... <laughs> You know, I, my goal at the moment, I want to take my kids to Disneyland, Disney World, you know, one of those, and fit in the rides. <laughs> that's, that's become more important now. And like, I was, I was kind of, I, I was actually thinking of trying to do the squat, the British squat record. I've always believed I'm capable of a huge squat, but obviously Strongman, it was more reps based. And I what was is thinking, it? What, what, is it? what is it? I think it's about, I, I, I was going to aim to do a thousand pounds squat. Raw? Raw? We're talking knee steeps. Knee, knee, knee wraps and, and a belt. Knee wraps and belt. I certainly believe I'm capable of it, but it will take a tremendous amount of dedication. And I've sort of been weighing up whether I think now, at this stage of my career, whether it's worth the risk. Because there is a risk to, to putting the body weight on and training for, the, for these type of, of records. And I, I look at things, you know, I, I could probably push myself may, maybe to get within contention of winning another British title. But it's not going to change anything in the long in, in the grand scheme of things. The only thing I've not achieved, I always wanted to try and get a podium at Worlds, and I, I came fourth. I got I got close. I've hit all my other targets. Terry, did you? <laughs> Terry did me. Yeah, we've had some good battles. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I've, you I've, guys I've were enjoyed... so close for a few years. Okay? We, we've had brilliant battles. I mean, I had Terry on the other day. It was a, it was a great kind so of. Oh, I watched it. I watched but, it. Was um, good. I, I've I've achieved a lot, and I've sort of I've, I've kind of I'm at peace with that now. And I'm really enjoying like a new chapter of my life. And I think I'm, I'm 37, so I'm not ancient. Then, then, then let me tell you something. You've lost your hunger. You've I have. Never, I to, to, to you, you will, unless you are antisocial, yep. desperate, shark eye, willing to cut your granny and have to win. Yeah. That, I, I, as, as you can see from the passion in Hapthor, it, yeah. it it's probably seems unbelievably odd to a lot of people. There's probably a few athletes who watched that and thought, uh, uh, yeah, I get it. Yeah. I get it. I get I mean, it. And, and, do, do, and do you know what? I, I, I couldn't have been any more odd myself. You know, strong man, I never really. But, but to get to the Olympics, you know, I had guys like John Regis in my team, Marcus Adam. To, Marcus Adam was in the in the two hundred meter final of the Olympics. Yeah. Regis was, was was also my dad. You know what I mean? These guys were badass. Dude. I mean, yeah. and, and this lump of shite managed to beat them in, in sprint offs in the end. And, and well, not Marcus, but anyway. Um, the right. Regis, Regis is jacket. I've still got it. I, I took it off him before the Olympics. Anyway, he, it has only done through extreme hard work, and and, and just will not give up. You like the 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 the, the Cyberdyne systems, you know, <laughs> the Terminator Two. Yeah, you know, true. yeah, you will not give up, and and, that, and that's and it sounds like you've already got ready to give up, but you've become rounded, loss. And that's have. a that's yeah. a wonderful thing. Life life has to be like that, and it's. Aging is not so bad. No, and I, like like I said, I mean, at first it was hard. I was like, I, I didn't understand it. I was just like, this isn't. I, I can honestly say, for about two years, I haven't had the same hunger when I competed. It was just like, 
I'd lost that real spark because me in my prime, and you'll remember what I was like in my prime. I was a, I was a nice person, but when it was game time, I was an animal. Yeah. I was beating myself with a stick and, and doing whatever it took oh, to yeah. get my head into that zone. Whereas <laughs> I can't do it now. <laughs> I can't I go. Should, I need to put together clip, clips of you pre deadlifts of yeah. whipping yourself. And but I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely enjoying helping a lot of the, the youngsters. Yeah. And I mean, I train people from complete beginners to, to international level athletes. That's going really, really well. Um, obviously, the YouTube stuff, I'm really enjoying doing that. The commentary, working with the Wuss guys has been great. I'd love to do some stuff with, with the Giants live team, if you guys will have me. Absolutely. And, um, you so know, I've, 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 I've had an idea for some time. What do you think is, maybe we get some comments down below. One of the thoughts I've had is, is actually, um, is to have an in-ear commentator during the big arena events. So let's say, Bryce, you're making a dollar. Let's say you have for like five, you do for like, I don't know, we're like 10 pence out of China. But $5, right? You, you buy an ear piece and then you can have laws in your ear. Well, we'll, we'll co- what do you think? Out. What do you guys think? Comments below. <laughs> laws in your ear. And then, and then you can sort of like tune in to Neil and Kaz. But then maybe Neil and Kaz don't have to fill in so much constantly because let's face it, you know, we, we whoosh, drive it on like an unbelievable pace. It's the only way it's worked in these big arenas. And it's, you know, and that's personally why I'm. Not overly worried that someone's going to come and take our slot, you know. I mean, Glenn's doing a good job and whatnot, but it's hard to get something done. You wrap that up. I mean, I always say we want a done, wrapped up podium in three hours. That's the goal. It never happens. It's never happened. But, you know, but maybe we can relax a little bit more if we had laws in the air. People would loving it. Just just, <laughs> I think you're doing a great job, by the way. Really. Thank I you think very much. Super duper. You're the perfect guy to do this. I, I really appreciate that, Colin. I really appreciate you coming on. I know. I, I, I put you on the spot with, with obviously one of the subjects, but I did want to make it mainly about you because you were an incredible athlete in your own right, an Olympic athlete. You've, you've, you're the, the founder of Giants Live. Obviously, you brought Darren um, Sadler on board, who's really helped excel the company. That's massively. You know, That's both, both huge. Of, for, for those that don't know Darren, they're completely the opposite. <laughs> you're, 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 you're the TV guy. He's the, the competition guy. And it works well like that. It, yes. It, I, 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 sports entertainment. He's he's a bit more sport. I'm a bit more entertainment. Look, but that, even then, that's not true. Daz has got a little spinning bow tie at times. He's, Daz, uh, Daz is as much. He's. Uh, do you know what? I think it all would have gone to crap if Daz hadn't have turned up. AEG Live couldn't make it happen. The great, biggest, most powerful live company in the world. And Daz, he, I think he saved my ass. He he's saved a, all he's so a little Let me, let me give him his well. absolute credit. No, he's, he's, he's a night. He's a night. No, you're competing against him. I did it once. And um, I think I came second, he came first, but I, I think second, equal less than they do. But I believe <laughs> I, I did like things like three reps in the axle. He did 20 and got told to stop. <laughs> there, was, there was a bit of a gulf between Darren and the rest of us. Anyway, Dar- Darren sorry. was a great athlete anyway. But I just want to say thank you for coming on. For people that do want to find you, is there, like, are you on social media? You don't really do too much. Do you know what? Media, I, I, you? I, 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 no, well, I've actually given away two of my Instagram I accounts. One to Giants, I want to be strong. I believe, I looked the other day, I've done, now done eight posts in 12 years on my, on my <laughs> now official Instagram. But I'm going to, Colin.Bryce, I'm going I'm to do a post tonight and, and say Thank how, how happy I, I, I am. I, I, I will, I will, I'll put the um, official Strongman page or the, the Giants live page, it links down below. You guys put great videos on there. There we go. Colin's getting his photo. Hey, I'm going to do this on Instagram. There we are. <laughs> Smile, Loz. <laughs> Guys, comment below. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel. I really hope I've enjoyed it. If, if you guys haven't, I mean, it's it's really good to get an insight into Colin. Obviously, he's he's been the head referee at World's Strongest Man. It's now been taken over by Magnus Ver, but for a good number of years, you were the head referee. It's a hard job being the referee and being the most hated man in Strongman. But I think he's done a good job. And I, no, I've enjoyed the, uh, the the opportunities you've given me over the years. I thank do appreciate you. them. Thank you. Thank and you. For, for any up-and-coming athletes, you know, Strongman was in a diabolical situation at one point. It was almost off-air. And Colin is probably the man that deserves the most credit for keeping Strongman going. So wow. as much hate that is out there, he's, um, he's done a lot of good as well. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Anyway, I'll just get back out to my pad. Why? <laughs> <laughs> all right buddy thank you very much for coming thank on you. i'll speak thank to you, you soon guys take care we will see you again